mental health being of our society and the female writers who have written their work for their journey and how they have been through this. I have with me Aruna Pap and Param Saran. Param Saran is by profession a nurse and she has been through a lot of challenges and she decided to write about it. Aruna Pap is very well known in our community. She has been the first Punjabi woman to represent in UNO for women issues. So I would like first Aruna Pap to give her take about how she was motivated to write about her issues, her journey, and her conclusions towards her book for what she has written. Please. I think uh, some of you have heard me speak about my work with immigrant women and families who are dealing with domestic violence. I came to Canada in 1972 with a grade three education, unable to read English or Hindi, and ended up as a locker room attendant at York University. While I was there, and I will not go into the detail, I was able to start a community center for immigrant women who were like myself, facing difficulties. And they came upon a time when there were about 300 women who had started to come to the community center in 82. What happened is, what I learned from these women and the women that I met, many of them were very well-educated women, came from very good families. They were now living in these apartments, there were third, six, seven apartments, story buildings, and they were not able to come down outside of the apartment buildings because they had little children. The weather was not complimentary. They were scared of taking their children out. So they were like prisoners in their own home until I opened this community center. I was very scared but excited but sad in seeing that these women who were so much more privileged were in some desperate situation. They couldn't work because they had children, little children. If they had been able to step out, maybe they would have been able to work. During this time, I was wanting to tell the community what is happening to these women, these beautiful, educated women who have come from India, and their lives are, this is what is happening. If it is happening to me, Oh well, I'm an uneducated person. I can only work in the locker room. What else can I do? But these women deserve better. So I wanted their stories to be told, but there was nobody listening. Even those who were professors, South Asian professors, in teaching in universities at that time in the 80s were having a very difficult time being published if they wrote a paper on math or economics or immigration, they would write a chapter which would be added to a book written by a white professor. Getting a professor, a Desi professor, to have a book of his own was very difficult. But here I was talking to the a professor who was helping me and the community liaison person, Elspeth Hayworth, and I said, something has to be done to help women who come to the community center. Long story short, she said, you know, Aruna, there are Desi women, and I call everybody Desi, they're writing stories about Indian women and immigration and what's happening to them. And her name, one of the ladies who's written is, her name is Bharti Mukherjee. She's a professor at the university in Montreal, and this is her story, can read this. I read those stories. Part of me was very happy that Bharti Mukherjee had written stories about immigrant women like the women that I had met. She was on television, she was doing interviews, her books were flying off the table. Part of me was very angry with her 
for writing the stories because she came from an elite family background and she wrote about us as these women, these women, these poor pathetic women. That was not okay. And it felt to me like she was taking our blood and selling it to the white people. Here, read about their stories. How pathetic. I didn't want that. You might as well take my kidney and sell it. But I had no avenue to change this. Few months later, <clears throat> one of the professors came and said, there is another lady coming from New Jersey. Bharti went to Rexdale and interviewed 100 women and wrote stories about them, the masala ones, very horrible stories, the worst ones. Now this person is coming from New Jersey and she wants stories from your group. I said, no, you're not going to talk. Well, you know, we negotiated. She, Two more weeks went by, three weeks went by. I said, no, you're not talking to any of these women. Then one day she said, well, you know, I said, you know, the women who come here come on buses, they don't have bus money, they have children, and you take everything they have and then you sell it. And I won't let that happen. What do these women get when they have given themselves their pain? What do they get? She said, well, how about we pay them $24 an hour? Thank you very much for my life story for $25 an hour. And then part of me is saying, if you don't have any milk money and you only need $25, it will buy three weeks milk, maybe, maybe. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Negotiations. She came back and she said, well, she only wants to talk to 50 women. After 50 women, she will pay $25, but she will take 20 stories, and the stories that get published, they get $50. You are making a negotiation with me for their life, their blood, their kidney. What the hell do you want? No. Oh, you have to go talk to the women. I talked to the women, and of course, there were a few women who said, okay, fine, we'll do it. What their desperation is, what I will not speak to them, but they agreed. Now that they have agreed, I have to go back and say, some will talk to you. But what you will do, all the 50 women that you interview, you will pay them $50, whether you print or not. Those stories that get printed, you will give $150. She said, what do you mean? I said, this woman is a very rich woman who's coming here. You know, I mean, in my situation, I was not able to give $25 to anybody, so she must be very rich. Oh, she has funding. Aha! She's taking funding for herself, but she's not willing to give. Interviews happened. <clears throat> that book never did get published, but the interviews happened. We were in a very little office that Centennial College, uh, Centennial Hospital had donated to us. We had no phone. One of the women from the group was working as a receptionist. She was not trained. She was just answering phones because there was nobody else. And all of a sudden she says, Arunaji, why don't we write our own books? Why don't we write our own stories? Why should these people come and write them? I said, what the? I don't know how to write a story. Does anybody write a story? She said, why not? Everybody got together and said, you write, even if you can write two paragraphs a day, a week, or 10 paragraphs, start writing. Write about what you think what you feel. Don't worry about English. Don't worry, whatever language you wanted to write in. What came out of that writing group is another long story. The end result was these women got together and printed this book, first of their kind in Canada. We printed 
1,500 copies. And all the women in the group, they put five in the bag, 10 in the bag, wherever they were in the grocery store, they would say, this is for $10, $10, would you buy it? Nurses would buy it, anybody, they would buy it. And that paid for a new telephone in the office. And the, what was the result of writing these two paragraphs, writing these two pages? They came back and said, it felt like a burden had come out of my heart. It's literal translation. Dil ki dard jo hai, kaagas pe aagai. Mene to suna bhi nahi tha kabhi, ke kaagas ke upar dil ki dard kaise a jati hai. That is how these women started to heal themselves. They wrote their stories and I said, if you trust each other, exchange your stories, talk about it. In those days, we didn't know what is the therapy. Today, writing is a mental health therapy. Professionals are trained how to do it. We thought we invented that. Today, we only have five store books left of this book. It has come over the years, as I went through my university years, I now have two masters, I have registered PhD program, I can read, I can write, and I have written extensively on the issue of immigrant women and their challenges. But what I learned in those new days with the community is what my work is based on. Teaching our community, our people to heal themselves. And I believe writing is one of the most important tools in our healing. This morning there was a question, somebody said, why do we keep writing about nostalgia? India, Pakistan, If you don't write about your background, if you don't write where you came from, if you don't write about the friends that you had, because these losses are huge, we have lost everything. We left it behind and we miss it. We need to write about it. You cannot write about today or the future if you don't write about what the loss is. The loss is this. Your sister is getting married and you can't attend because you haven't got a ticket. That's huge loss. I think I'll end my little discussion with that. One thing I want to do is there were other women who were writing in Toronto, in Vancouver, and I didn't know about them because we lived in a very small bubble of our own in North York. I have had every book published and bought it and in my library that was written by any Desi woman. Men have been writing forever, but I needed to have and learn good, bad, and ugly. What are Desi women writing? Over the years, I have passed those books down to the younger generation. I have some books that I want to pass down to Halima. She's also my baby, but she's also my daughter. This was published in Mississauga. A very limited copies were printed. And I think you should have one of these. This is one of the last copies of this book, and there was a very powerful uh, young lady who was a journalist from Pakistan, Fazia uh, Rafiq. Boy, she was an atom bomb. She loved to write, remember Fazia? And she started Aurat Darbar. And there were only for, uh, 12 copies of it, and now I only have one left. So this is my uh, contribution to your library for this festival. Thank you.
I think uh, Didi has a lot of things to talk all the time because she's in a profession where she has learned and have been to a very long road where she can be helpful for others also. So if anybody needs any kind of help, they can contact her. She's a very good therapist. Now I have a, a next generation which has contributed a lot in terms of women health. She has suffered herself. She has been out of that journey. She wrote, she's a very positive person and she wrote about it so that it may help somebody else. She's a nurse. So Param, please come and speak about your work, your writings and your observations. Thank you so much, Halima. And first of all, thank you so much for providing me this stage, especially with uh, Arunwandi, that's my honor. So my book, um, On Your Life, oh sorry, Create As You Go, this book came out of my own personal experience of challenges with mental health. So Joby Mane Kia apne aapko depression se bahar nikalne ke liye wo sab is book mein hai aur jo koi bhi ye book padega aur mujhe bahut hi acha positive response mila is book se jo bhi jisne bhi ye book padhi hai unko ye laga ke mujhe lag raha tha ke sirf ye mere sath hi hua hai so this book has uh, so many people have related themselves to this book so that that has been really my pleasure ke is book ke madhyam se main help kar saki hu logon ki main as a profession registered nurse hu counselor and therapist hu and i'm a public speaker too main zyada time nahi lungi uh, mental health ke bare mein hum jitni baat kare utni kam hai kyunki iske bare mein baat kam hoti hai log baat karna pasand nahi karte kyunki there is still a stigma with it log ye baat doctor se bhi karne se darte hain ki mujhe depression ho raha mujhe sadness ho rahi hai main acha feel nahi kara hame jab blood pressure badhta hai na to hum bhag ke doctor ke paas jate hain lekin jab sadness aati hai udasi aati hai to hum sochte hain aisa hi है ठीक हो जाएगा अपने आप क्योंकि हमें वो लगता ही नहीं कि वो कोई इश्यू है इन फैक्ट जो भी फिजिकल इलनेसेस हैं वो सारी शुरू कहां से होती हैं यहां से स्ट्रेस इज द मेन कॉज ऑफ ऑल द फिजिकल इलनेसेस स्ट्रेस से हार्ट अटैक होता है स्ट्रेस से हाइपरटेंशन होता है स्ट्रेस से डायबिटीज होती है स्ट्रेस से स्ट्रोक होता है सारी समस्याएं जो सेहत की हैं वो स्ट्रेस से जुड़ी हुई हैं क्योंकि हम स्ट्रेस पे ध्यान नहीं देते हम उसको ये सोचते कि जिंदगी का हिस्सा है कोई बात नहीं अपने आप चला जाएगा अपने आप नहीं जाता स्ट्रेस के स्ट्रेस आता है जिंदगी लाइफ हैपन्स जिंदगी में कुछ ना कुछ होता रहता है वो ही जिंदगी को इंटरेस्टिंग बनाता है लेकिन वो सब के होते हुए हम स्ट्रेस फ्री कैसे रह सकते हैं उसके लिए जैसे अरुणा दीदी ने बोला राइटिंग थेरेपी राइटिंग इज अ रियली गुड थेरेपी जो आपके मन में है ना वो सारा एक कागज पे उतार दो जो भी है जो भी आपको कष्ट दे रहा है जो की जो भी आपको उदासी दे रहा है पूरा एक पेपर पे लिख के उसे जब आप सेकंड टाइम में पढ़ोगे ना तो उसका इफेक्ट धीरे धीरे कम होता जाएगा जैसे दीदी ने बोला कि दर्द को दिल से कागज पे उतार दो और फिर क्या करो उस कागज को बर्न कर दो जब आप उस कागज को बर्न करोगे ना तो आपको लगेगा आपका पूरा बोझ है ना जो हट गया वो खत्म हो गया किसी के साथ आपको गुस्सा है गिला है लग रहा है कि उस बंदे ने मेरे साथ अच्छा नहीं किया फॉर गिवनेस के लिए जो भी उन्होंने आपके साथ किया वो कागज पे लिख दो उसको बर्न कर दो फॉर गिव दैम बोलो कि जो हुआ वो हुआ खत्म हो गया आप ये टेक्निक um, करके देखिए आप जब करोगे तो आपको खुद ही लगेगा कि वो जो मैं इतने सालों से बोझ लेके घूम रहा था वो मेरा एकदम से जस्ट कागज पे लिखने से खत्म हो गया उसके अलावा जो चार जो चार टूल्स कह लो स्किल्स कह लो थेरेपी मॉडलिटीज कह लो जो मैंने यूज की हैं वो मैंने अपने नाम के साथ उनको रिलेट किया जो मैंने बुक में भी लिखी हैं उससे आपको मेरा नाम भी याद रहेगा स्पेलिंग्स भी याद रहेंगे और आपको वो जो टूल्स हैं स्किल्स हैं वो याद करने के लिए भी आपको इजी होगा सो पी से पॉजिटिव स्टे पॉजिटिव स्टे पॉजिटिव का मतलब ये नहीं है कि कुछ भी हम नेगेटिव को अवॉइड करेंगे स्टे पॉजिटिव का मतलब है कि जो भी हो रहा है ना उसमें से भी कुछ अच्छा ढूंढने की कोशिश करें वो कहते हैं ना कि खड़ी हुई घड़ी भी दिन में दो बार सही टाइम बताती है 
सो so, कुछ ना कुछ जो भी हो रहा है उसमें कुछ ना कुछ अच्छा ढूंढने की कोशिश करें जो भी हो रहा है वो ये कहने के बजाय ये मेरे साथ क्यों हो रहा है अगर ये कहें कि ये मुझे क्या सिखाने आया है तो उससे वो उससे डील करने के लिए हमें बहुत ही इजी हो जाएगा उससे डील करना हमारे लिए आसान हो जाएगा सेकेंड है ए P के बाद A, A means attitude of gratitude. Develop an attitude of gratitude. शुक्राने की भावना अपने अंदर पैदा करें जो चीज हमारे पास है उसका शुक्राना करें जो चीज नहीं है अगर उस पर हम फोकस करेंगे तो वी आर गो ना अट्रैक्ट ऑल द थिंग्स जो नहीं है बिकॉज वेर एवर योर फोकस गोज एनर्जी फ्लोज जहां पर भी आपका फोकस होगा वैसी ही चीजें वैसी ही वाइब्रेशन आप जैसे बाहर डालोगे वैसी ही अंदर आएंगी सो so, अगर आप एटीट्यूड अपना रखेंगे कि शुक्राने का ग्रेटिट्यूड का शुक्राने वाला रखेंगे तो जो भी जिस चीज के लिए भी आप शुक्राना करेंगे जिसके लिए भी आप ग्रेटिट्यूड करेंगे वो आपके पास बहुतात में आना शुरू हो जाएगा वो आपके पास ज्यादा आएगा उसके बाद है आर पी ए आर आर मीन्स टेक रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी अपनी जिंदगी की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी खुद लीजिए ये बोलने की बजाय कि उसने मेरे साथ ऐसा किया तो मुझे डिप्रेशन हो गया उसने मेरे साथ ऐसा किया मेरी जिंदगी खराब हो गई उसने मेरे साथ ऐसा किया तो मैं अपनी जिंदगी में कुछ कर नहीं पाई उसकी बजाय अपनी जिंदगी की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी खुद लीजिए जब हम अपनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी खुद लेते हैं ना तो एक रिलीफ मिलता है जब हम अपनी जिंदगी की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी किसी और के हाथों में दे रहे हैं तो उसका मतलब हम उनके गुलाम हैं इसका मतलब कोई भी आपको अपने शिकंजे में रख सकता है कोई भी आपको अपने तरीके से चला सकता है नहीं वो नहीं खुद को अपने हिसाब से हिसाब से चलाओ अपनी जिंदगी की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी खुद लो जो भी हुआ हाँ मैंने किया जो भी हुआ मेरी वजह से हुआ और अब मैंने उसे ठीक कैसे करना है वो रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी अगर अपने अंदर लाएंगे तो उससे हमारा स्ट्रेस लेवल ऑलरेडी नीचे चला जाएगा और चौथा है एम पी ए आर एम माइंडफुलनेस बी माइंडफुल ऑफ एवरी लिटल मोमेंट इन योर लाइफ माइंडफुलनेस का मतलब है जिस काम को हम अभी कर रहे हैं अगर हम अभी यहाँ पे सब बैठे हुए हैं ना तो हमारा ध्यान सिर्फ आप सबका ध्यान सिर्फ मेरे को सुनने में होना चाहिए और मेरा ध्यान सिर्फ आपको बताने में होना चाहिए दैट इज कॉल्ड थैंक यू दैट इज कॉल्ड माइंडफुलनेस माइंडफुलनेस क्योंकि हम लोगों को आदत पड़ी हुई है एक साथ दस काम करने की तो एक भी काम ढंग से नहीं होता क्योंकि एक काम को हमारा दिमाग इस तरीके से बना हुआ है कि ये एक टाइम पे एक चीज पे ही अपना फोकस कर सकता है बट जब हम इसको इतनी सारी डायरेक्शंस में फोकस करने की कोशिश करते हैं तो एक काम भी हम 100 परसेंट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन से नहीं कर पाते जब हम 100 परसेंट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन से नहीं कर पाते तो उसकी 100 परसेंट इफेक्टिवनेस भी नहीं होती हम काम चलाओ काम करते हैं सो बी केयरफुल के जो आप काम कर रहे हो उसी में पूरा ध्यान रहे और उसके अलावा बी माइंडफुल आप जो बोलते हो क्या बात करते हो स्पेशली अपने आप में कैसे वर्ड्स यूज करते हो वर्ड्स क्रिएट योर वर्ल्ड जैसा भी आप अपने लिए शब्द यूज करोगे वैसी ही आपको वाइब्रेशंस मिलेंगी वैसी ही चीजें आपकी जिंदगी में आती रहेंगी गलती से भी खुद को ये मत बोलो कि मैं तो बेवकूफ हूं वो सुन रहा है अंदर वो उसको पता अच्छा इसने तो बेवकूफ बोल दिया अब मैं बेवकूफी वाले काम इसको लेके दू ऐसे अपना दिमाग काम करता जो सब कॉन्शियस माइंड है दैट्स हाउ इट वर्क्स सब कॉन्शियस माइंड रिकॉर्ड्स एवरीथिंग सो बी वेरी केयरफुल आप कौन से वर्ड्स यूज करते हो सेकंड बी माइंडफुल आपने थॉट्स के सोचते क्या हो सोचने से पहले सोचो थॉट्स क्रिएट थिंग्स जो हमारी थॉट्स होती है ना वो ही हम चीजें अपनी जिंदगी में लेके आते हैं दैट्स हाउ द लॉ ऑफ अट्रैक्शन वर्क सो गलती से भी गलत सोच अगर दिमाग में आती है तो अप्लाई थ्री सी प्रिंसिपल जो मैं अपने क्लाइंट्स को सिखा, सिखाती हूँ चेक वेन यू आर हैविंग अ नेगेटिव थाट कैच इट इमीडिएटली उसी टाइम कैच करो एंड देन चेंज इट 
को चेंज कर लो पॉजिटिव थॉट में क्योंकि और कैच और चेंज आप तभी कर सकते हैं जब आप माइंडफुल हो नहीं तो हम बात यहाँ कर रहे हैं ध्यान हमारा घर पे है और ए, एक ध्यान हमारा गाड़ी चलाने में है तो हम कुछ भी सही तरीके से नहीं कर सकते सो माइंडफुलनेस रहने के लिए ये माइंड फुल नहीं होना चाहिए माइंडफुलनेस तभी होगी ये ये यहाँ से थोड़ा रिलैक्स्ड होगा और रिलैक्सेशन के लिए द बेस्ट थेरेपी जो दीदी ने बताई राइटिंग थेरेपी है उसके साथ ही एक थेरेपी मैं बताती हूँ ब्रीदिंग टेक्निक ब्रीदिंग वर्क्स विद आर वेगस नर्व ब्रीदिंग जब हम कंट्रोल्ड ब्रीदिंग करते हैं ब्रीदिंग एक्सरसाइज करते हैं वेगस नर्व हमारी एक्टिवेट होती है वेगस नर्व का काम क्या है अपने और स्ट्रेस लेवल को रिड्यूस करना सो वेगस नर्व को एक्टिवेट करने के लिए आप ब्रीदिंग एक्सरसाइज करें और ब्रीदिंग एक्सरसाइज के लिए क्या करना है सिर्फ अपने ब्रीदिंग पे ध्यान देना है रिलैक्स करनी है अपनी ब्रीदिंग सांस लेना है धीरे से छोड़ना है और हो सके तो फोर बाय फोर लाइक चार सेकंड के लिए सांस लिया चार सेकंड के लिए होल्ड करो चार सेकंड के लिए सांस छोड़ो फिर चार सेकंड के लिए होल्ड करो फोर बाय फोर ब्रीदिंग इट्स को ना make you really relaxed in 10 minutes so i hope you have uh, gained something from what i said nimyan thank you so much kuratulain hader kehti hain ek novel to har koi likh sakta hai kyunki ek zindagi har ek ne guzari hai iske sath sath social well being hum sab pe depend karti hai hamare attitudes hamare behavior determined karte hain ki hum kya reflect karte hain और फिर उससे क्या गेन करते हैं हमारे पास बहुत से लोग कम्युनिटी में मौजूद हैं जो बहुत सी सर्विसेज दे रहे हैं अपना कथार्सिस जाके कम्युनिटी में पॉजिटिव कीजिए ताकि आपको पॉजिटिव वाइब्स जवाब में मिलें परम सरन आप बहुत आपको मैं आपको मैंने देखा है आपकी जर्नी में मैं ये समझती हूँ कि आप वन ऑफ दो स्ट्रॉन्ग वेमेन who really represent a lot of women and aruna ji you are one of the leading people of our women in in uh, canadian society who stood against those who were trying to pull you through so many ways to bring you down and you you got succeed in that and we can all have that example thank you very much